I personally think with, with dental monitoring, we're delivering better care than we ever have. We're seeing these patients on a weekly basis. Uh, and if you don't know how dental monitoring works, I would I would really uh, encourage you to, to, to find out. It's, it's changed my life. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Orthopreneurs Podcast. Today, you don't have just one special guest. You've got three special guests. Mm-hmm. Because these two equal three. Don't ask me what that means. <laughs> these are two really, really great clinicians, amazing human beings. Yep, Bill makes up one, and, and uh, Trevor makes up two. But um, please put your hands together and, and, and give a round of, of warm orthopreneurs welcome to both Dr. Trevor, Trevor Nichols and Bill Dissinger. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Yeah, you guys don't have to having. applaud yourselves. <laughs> I'm, I'm applauding Bill. Bill. I'm applauding yeah. Bill because I love him. <laughs> okay. you know? Mutual admiration society. So, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about um, about a couple of the things I really want to dive into today, and it's clear aligners. Um, I know both of you have a lot of experience, um, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But first, um, I'm going to start with you, Bill. If you can just give it that kind of 90 second intro about yourself, where you came from, uh, you know, how you ended up where you are now. Yeah, first of all, I don't do anything talking in 90 seconds, so hang on. But Take your time. You're uh, okay. out on the West Coast in Oregon. You <laughs> yep. just take your time. Yeah, we're just nice and slow out here, out here in Oregon. Um, yeah, so I've been in practice 23 years. Uh, joined my father, who was an orthodontist, amazing orthodontist, actually. Yes, he is. And, um, and an even better human being. Better human, absolutely. And uh, as we were talking earlier before we started this, I... Uh, I've been working a little bit less and uh, at least once a week we get together. I, I get my, together with my father and take him to lunch or dinner or whatever. And we usually play golf. We usually only play about five holes. He, he's got Alzheimer's and, um, but it's, you know, a, a special time and, and, and treasure it and cherish it while we can. Uh, but he and I worked together for about 10 years before he retired. And then I've been running it. Uh, I was running it by myself for 12 years. I brought in an associate last year, uh, Sarah Edmondson. If there's any fans of Sarah out there, she went to UT University. She would say the UT University of Tennessee. Um, I think you're talking uh, University of Texas. No, no. Around these parts. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, uh, In Memphis. I was actually born in Memphis. My dad went to dental school uh, at Tennessee in Memphis. So that's where I was born. And uh, she, she's awesome. So uh, I'm not just saying that because I'm going to make her listen to this, but she truly is awesome <laughs> and has really helped change change my life. Um, been a, a Ormco uh, Damon user for many years and uh, been a key opinion leader for them for 17 or 18 years, I think now, and um, was asked to uh, trial beta trial Spark back in 2018. Uh, which I think Trevor's probably going to say the same thing. And uh, we'll get talking a lot about Spark tonight, but um, it's kind of, it's another thing that's, that's really changed um, my practice life, which has helped change my personal life, which we'll, we'll hopefully get to. And I just want to point out the t-shirt I'm wearing. Beautiful. OP shirt, Summit. I mean, it's got two of my favorite things in the world. It's got OP and a rainbow so, or the premieres and it's got R2D2. I'm a total Star Wars geek. So, I mean, when this got, when this t-shirt got thrown at me from the front in the meeting, when you guys were throwing out t-shirts, I almost killed somebody to get this t-shirt. So, well, you know, somebody, so if you couldn't get one there, you just let me know. And oh, I th- know. did Darth Vader throw that one at you? No, I think it was Mike Vidigan. So it wasn't quite as exciting. Yeah. Well, the problem was, <laughs> you know, Darth wasn't throwing like he had the force. Darth was kind of throwing him very... Darth was throwing them like he'd never thrown a T-shirt or anything in his life. And so if you were yeah. to be on the first row, you weren't getting <laughs> anything for Darth. And, and just to add, um, those who haven't met Dr. Terry Dissinger, um, one, of the, one of the all-time greatest people. I, when I, you know, I don't know if I ever told you this, but when I was, when I was um, applying to ortho residency, uh, I was observing one day at UOP and your dad was there. <laughs> And I think he was really focusing a lot that day on Herbst appliances, right? Probably, yeah. And um, I was a GP, just there for the day visiting. And he was so gracious and so nice to me, treated me. He was truly educating me while I was there without even having been accepted or anything to ortho residency, just there interviewing. I, I don't think it was there on interview day. I think it was a visit day. And he was just 
telling me all about it, taking his time. And he could easily have dismissed me, but he's just not that kind of guy. And I will tell you, my neck hurt at the end of the day from having to look up at him the whole time. <laughs> How tall is dad? Six 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 eight. He, he was six seven back in the day. Um, he has great at orthodon. I don't know what career was better for him. He was an Olympic gold medalist in basketball, rookie of the year in the NBA. Um, so you know, it's crazy. When people say, you know, did you do what your dad did? It's like, well, no one did what he did. No. Um, but it's uh, I never heard that story from you about him. So that's oh, yeah. that's that's amazing, and that's and that's that's who he is like you said he's a better better man than he actually was a basketball player orthodontist which was saying a lot he was great at, yeah. he is was mm -hmm. great at both and oddly enough he ended up coming to nova when i was an ortho resident uh a couple of years later and he remembered me and he was talking about the advanced sync appliance at that point yeah and, and again great conversation great human being um one of the giants in orthodontics uh, who gets a lot of really good accolades, but doesn't even, I think, get the due he deserves. So I'm here to say it out loud that uh, he'll, Thank you. he'll always, 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 always the rest of my life hold a special place because he's such a gentleman. He, he embodies what I think all of us should aspire to be as clinicians and as human beings. And if only everybody could act the way your dad acts, this world would be a better place. I just want to say that out loud. So Thank you. That's... Um... Don't try to keep it together here. Try not to cry. Yeah, come on, Thank baby. <laughs> cry. Let it out. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold it up. Hold Tell it me the quan. The quan. <laughs> um, so, Dr. Trevor Nichols, I've never met your dad. Um, sorry. Uh, but tell us a little bit about uh, how you ended up where you are um, at this point in the game. I mean, you, you're the tw twice returning champion. Uh, this is your this is your third. You get a robe on your third time on the <laughs> podcast. So we'll make sure we mail that one to you. But tell us uh, a little bit about you know, like how you ended up where you are right now as well. Well, first off, my dad's amazing as well. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, Glenn, thank you. I'm honored to be here with you and Bill. Bill's a, a wonderful friend and mentor of mine, as are you, Bill. But um, I'm a, a young, I'll say young generation orthodontist. Um, so I'm still learning and growing like the rest of us. And uh, I joined um, Dr. Stuart Frost uh, in his practice in 2018. And um, that's when we started using Spark. But um, talk about big shoes to fill. You know, I think, yeah. uh, you know, Bill can relate to this because his shoes to fill were even bigger. I can't imagine being the son of an NBA superstar and amazing orthodontist who invents things and is just amazing. But um, I feel a bit the same. Um, and really what all I'm, I'm trying to do is just be a better orthodontist like you guys and live up to my potential. Um, working with Dr. Frost has been amazing because he's set the standard and the bar really high for me to try and climb. Uh, and it's been a wonderful journey. So being with him um, has been great and learning and, and getting to know my favorite part is just getting to know people like you guys, you know, I, it's afforded me opportunity to get to know people like you that have elevated me and made me a better human and a better orthodontist. So awesome. Right on brother. And I always tell the story whenever I'm around you, Trevor, have, you know, when I used to go to Stu's courses, cause I've loved taking the stuff and you were there teaching. I was like, what's this guy going to teach me? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, he's out of school, like a year, like, you know, I, and I was out of school a long time at that point. I was out like five years um, <laughs> and, or six years. And um, I just remember your control of the subject matter was remarkable yeah, for somebody that short out of school. Cause people could easily say, Oh, he's working with Stu. He, you know what, dude, you've blazed your own trail really, really well. Um, and it's impressive. And for any young orthodontist out there listening, you, you know, I think we did a podcast episode once on, um, being the best associate, uh, at one point, how you can be the best associate, uh, definitely listen to it because, uh, if you can bring, if I had somebody in my life, I was thinking about bringing into my practice, who could bring the value that you bring, uh, you know, the value you bring doubles your value to me, if that makes any sense, right? Like, you know, it's like that line from uh, the Anchorman, 70% of the time it works every all the time. But but literally, like, if, if you can find somebody who brings your kind of value to a partnership or to an associateship, it's literally worth 10 times what you'd pay for somebody who isn't. And so uh, kudos to you for what you've done so far, so far. Uh, I think we're going to see some great things. Thanks. So let's talk a little bit about clear liners because that's something the two of you have a lot of experience in. Um, let's go back. Here. What was the first aligner system you guys first worked with? Trevor, what was the first one? Invisalign. 
So you, you were an Invisalign user when you first started. Surprise, spoiler alert, everybody. They're really big Spark users. Um, <laughs> we'll come back to that after. Bill, were you an Invisalign user as well? Yeah, I was trained back in 1999 when they first started. Wow. I, I, as a GP, I was doing a lot, some aligners to set up some restorative cases back around 2001 with the elliptical shaped attachments. And it's kind of like a miracle that anything even worked back then. Mm. Um, That's funny because that was back before a line claimed that any GPs were doing Invisalign. Oh but, yeah, of um, course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I have no clue what you're discussing here. Now, I, I took it in 2001 or 2002 in San Francisco. I took my really good two-day course so I could become really qualified at what I was doing as a GP. And I did about 50 cases before I turned them all over to my ortho and said, you guys do the ortho, I will do the restorative. And it worked out well. Big shout out to uh, Greg Vaughn and Paolo Leone, who are my, mm. my orthos when I was in Seattle. So uh, let's talk about your switch to Spark. And we'll start with you, Bill. What was it? Because the endless debate in all the online Facebook groups, right? If you talk to people about a line, uh, they'll say, great, amazing, wonderful. Those who don't like a line will say, horrible, terrible. You know, I hate their clean checks. I hate this. I hate that. And so I moved to Spark. The people who love a line scream at the people who like Spark. The people who like Spark don't seem to yell back a lot at the people who like a line. But I'm curious for you to sort of clear up a little bit. What is it about um, Spark that you like more than uh, a line? And note, everybody, that they are. K KOLs, key opinion leaders for Spark. But if you knew these two gentlemen, you'd know that makes no difference in what their opinion is going to be. They're going to tell you the truth and they're honest. Um, and I am going to hit you up a little bit also uh, about some of the things that you wish you could change about it to make it better. So um, I'll start with you, Bill, please. I was asked to, to be one of the beta testers in 2018 uh, on Spark, which is actually kind of surprising because I was not a big clear liner practice. I was 15% clear liners at that point. I use clear liners when a patient came in and the only way I was going to get money from them was if I gave them clear liners. It was either clear liners or nothing. So I tried to talk everybody I could into, into brackets. Um, but pretty early on, I started seeing some things that I hadn't seen with the line, at least in my hands. And, you know, one of the things, Glenn, you were saying that, you know, spark people, you know, say, oh, this is better because that. And a lot of people say it's better because that. I think, you know, as orthodontists, we find something that that works for us and we're comfortable with, and then we get good at it, or at least we try to get good at it. And, but I saw some, some successes early that I hadn't seen uh, with Invisalign. And then I got, I got curious and I got like, okay, is this something that maybe is, is viable that I can learn to get better at? Um, and then slowly over the next year and a half, I started really ramping up the number of liner cases I was doing and I was getting more successes and seeing better tracking of teeth. And then the world imploded in 2020. And that was an eye opener to me. As an eye open, to be honest, it was an eye opener to me for you. That's when I'd kind of been following you, but that's when I really saw you as a leader in our profession. I just was a little slow to get there compared to some people. Um, but But in all seriousness, what you did for all of us during the lockdown period, the just just being there. And I know that, that that sounds not like a big deal, but during that time when all of us were scared, just knowing that you were there and you were working on trying to help us was reassuring. It was during, it was during lockdown that I signed up to be an RD member because I was just like, I want to be with this guy. Thanks, um, so Thanks, you, know, you said some nice things about Trevor and I, but we need a chance to say nice things about you. But um, what you've done for our profession in such a short amount of time is, I mean, it's just it's mind blowing. It That's really right. is. Only, and, and, only took me 30 years. <laughs> well, but it only no, but took you it. five or six years of, no, of OP it. to do what you've done. So well, I, um, I know this is a total love fest tonight. And and, and um, just so everybody knows, when Glenn sent us out the link today, it was Krieger.love instead oh. of Krieger.live. So, <laughs> And uh, if anybody goes to Krieger.love and you find something, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know what's at Krieger.love. Uh, you can have that URL. Uh, it is yours forever. And by the way, now everybody and their grandmother is going to go to Krieger.live. Yeah, I love yeah. it. You need to put something good up on there. You, don't, you, you, you can't not think that wasn't going to come out tonight. No, I mean, come on. And by the way, that, it, there's a quick aside there for it. Just like a little pearl that you just touched on. Um, 
If you ever want to have your own Zoom room that, with an easy to remember URL, all you have to do is go register your name at GoDaddy, like Dissinger.live. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no .com available more than likely, but Dissinger.live or Nichols.live. And then you just have your Zoom link of your private room, put it into your GoDaddy forwarding. So whenever anybody goes to Dissinger.live, it'll automatically forward to that private Zoom room mm -hmm. static IP that doesn't change. Um, and, and our static URL. And so that at point, you can always tell people, Hey, just go to this live. And now they're going straight to your private zoom room, which is awesome. So there's your little, since you mentioned it, I figured I'd tell everybody that little trick again, go register a name that makes work. It could be ortho.live or whatever you want it to be, but you forward it in GoDaddy to go from the room address, uh, from that address to the room address. And it's seamless. Nobody will ever know. Perfect. So. Yeah, there you go. We'll use that for our Zoom, and then and then we'll go to Krieger Love for the love room. But, oh, yeah. just go, you go. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you're gonna be there alone, uh, or or who knows what you'll be with there. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, um, thank you for the kind words. It means the world world coming from you. Um, now, but you were ta you were mentioning how everybody wants to be good with with what they've got in their own hands, right? What they use. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So so during that lockdown. I think as a, as a lot of us, it, it made me evaluate all the systems in my practice. And, um, and it was a, it was a figuring out, okay, what have we been doing that's been working, but what have we been doing? And I think for a lot of us, that's not working. Um, and then also, you know, our line patients or our spark patients were, they were just kind of clicking along, you know, during that shutdown, they were able to keep treating themselves. We started doing virtual monitoring at that point. Um, implemented that. And, and then when we were able to open back up, their treatments has kept going. Our bracket patients, I don't know about you all, but I was repairing broken brackets for weeks, you know, just trying to get people yeah. back onto the tracks. So from then forward, I decided I really, I was, I was successful now with the liners having spark in my hands. Um, I was getting better at using them, learning better techniques of how to use clear liners. And I saw the vision of what I wanted my practice to be. I decided at that point, I wanted my practice to be a heavy aligner practice to the point where today we're 80% aligner practice. Nice. Whereas four years ago, we were 15%. Uh, we virtual monitor everybody with dental monitoring. And um, it's, I, I live a different life now. Um, I can't remember if we we're on film already when I was talking about my dad, because we talked about it off as well yeah. but today was a non-doctor patient day my staff was there seeing patients uh but i didn't have to be in the practice it was all liner patients today and uh they saw i don't know how many patients but a lot they did a bunch of new start patients and i was off taking my dad to lunch and playing golf with them today and i i want to i want to yeah. run back over to trevor for a minute but remind me i want to come back to to that aspect because we are um a large, not as high a large share share as you are, but my practice is probably 65%, 70% aligners um, from my side of the practice. My partner, Michael Rasmussen, he, he loves kids and I let him see a lot of the kids. I love adults and complex interdisciplinary cases. So I see all of that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I know our <laughs> honest hate complex interdisciplinary cases, but to me, they're so much fun. They're so easy, but I think it's because of my, my life in that world, right? Yeah. Um, but but I remote monitor and I love it and it's awesome and we're getting there. But Trevor, talk a little bit about your practice. I've been there a couple of times. I've got to watch you work. But if you want to share with everybody, what, do you know what percentage your practice is, aligners and, and, and really how you ended up with Spark? Yes, yeah, so I'll start the first question and just say that we're... Um... We're about 30% aligners and 70% brackets. So we're still more bracket heavy uh, in our practice. And um, the way that this kind of emerged for us was in 2018 when Spark Beta was announced, you know, Dr. Frost, of course, being an insider with Ormco was privy to some information about that happening. And at the time... Um, he was virtually doing no aligners, you know, a little bit of Invisalign. Uh, and when I had joined, I, uh, if we're doing shout outs, was trained by Dr. Gary Brigham, uh, who's an amazing yeah, he's, Invisalign he's uh, orthodontist. So I was trained by him. And he scares me a little bit, by the way. I just want to say that out he's loud. amazing. I, he's uh, amazing. But like, <laughs> if you're front row with him at a dinner meeting, it, there's energy there, man. Yes, he is incredible. So he taught me uh, 
you know, all the basics of, of, of aligners. And when I came into the practice, it was clear to me that Dr. Frost was very frustrated with the aligner cases in the practice. And it's not because he didn't know how to do them. It was because they weren't performing to the level that he was getting with brackets and wires. And anyone that knows Dr. Frost knows that he's going to take it to perfection. He's the God of brackets. And so he almost wasn't going to do it if it wasn't going to be just as good. And thankfully patients, you know, came to the practice and were okay using brackets and wires because they saw his results. Right. Um, however, we knew, right, that the time was coming in which we needed to prepare ourselves to get good at doing aligners with the company that we loved and trusted and things like that. So when he found out that Onco was going to be releasing uh, an aligner product, Spark, um, he jumped on board. And that's right about the time I came in. So because I had good uh, Invisalign training, I kind of started to manage some of the Spark cases. And um, we started doing a little bit to kind of experiment with it. And then, you know, six months went by and we're kind of a little bit gasping at how amazing the cases were looking. Even six months in, we're talking transverse, we're talking AP correction, crowding all the things that we had literally plugged and played the same protocols and mechanics that we were using before now into Spark, but getting cases to evolve better. So that kind of is where the Spark was lit with Spark, right? Uh, no pun intended there, but we kind of, it ignited the fire to where we're like, okay, we can do this now. Uh, and now we're managing obviously more complex cases, you know, um, gummy smile cases and, and severe crowdings and APs and things like that. We're doing buckle shelf tads with class three correction with aligners, all sorts of stuff, because now we know that there's no limit. The limit is just within us. So it's it's been a great evolution. I feel like there's still a lot for us to learn, but it's been a great ride so far. Right on. So so before we jump back to, to Bill's, uh, the conversation about his aligner adult cases or aligner case in general and how he monitors them, talk to me a little bit about uh, the advantages, right? I think I told both you guys, I don't know if I said it on air or, or not, but I think I said, look, I don't like bashing the negatives of anything. I always like looking at the positives. So where are the areas that you think Spark performs better? What in your hands, right? I And uh, disclaimer, I have used both Spark and the line in my own mouth. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of fill you in what my thoughts were as a, as a patient, but as, as a user, where are the places where you think Spark excels? Um, so for me, yeah, Bill, do you want yeah. to go first and I'll add yeah. him? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, so I was just going to say that the first thing for me, I guess there's three big things. Um, the first is just the material in general. I feel like the plastic, the true gen as Spark calls it, uh, or true gen XR, there's two types. One that the true gen is just like your initial wires you could think of. And the XR stands for extra rigid. So it's a little bit stiffer, kind of like a stainless steel wire. So uh, I feel that the plastic performs a little bit better. Um, that's first and foremost. And they've done trials to test it, all those things. The second thing I really like about it is the clarity. Um, it's a bit more clear. And the third is, is the comfort. So those are kind of the big three that we, we like to talk about and that we really believe in is the material, um, you know, the comfort and the aesthetics of it. But probably even more than that broad scope, I think it's about partnering with a company that we really believe in and trust, uh, one that we feel has our best interest in mind, allows us control, flexibility, and freedom to kind of treat the cases that we how we want to and use the products that we want. But that that kind of be what I would say. And I'm sure Bill has more to add to that. I hope I didn't steal too much of his thunder there. No, no, thunder. Yeah, you know, the, the thunder's for lightning and thunder. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new well, nicknames, by the way. I like it. Let's do it, Bill. Bill is thunder. Bill, why Bill, can't I be lightning? I'm fast, man. <laughs> you can be, okay, Bill, you're lightning and Trevor's thunder. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um, the, um, the the plastic is is truly different. And, uh, you know, it's the, the plastic being, you know, a, in a number of years newer, you think about technology uh, and, and how quickly technology changes. I, I have a, a, a MacBook Pro I just bought nine months ago. I spilled something on the keyboard. Apple doesn't know I spilled something. They just know the keyboard didn't yeah, work. It'll be between us. <laughs> yep, yep. And so I, I took it in to get it repaired. They had Apple Care, and and uh, so they their thing is is they don't give loaners out, but what they tell you to do is just buy a new MacBook, right? And and transfer your data, use it for a few days, and then bring it back as a return for free. I'm like, well, that seems like cheating the system, but whatever. I'll do that. So I bought the new MacBook that they had, and. I mean, in nine months, the difference in speed, I mean, this thing was smoking hot. 
So you just think about how fast technology changes. And, did you keep and, it, by the way? Did you did you keep that new one? No, I, I took it back. It was like four thousand dollars. I was just like, I that is back. insane. <laughs> but I had fun for about four days. Technology changing. Um, just that the plastic is better. That the studies that they've done as far as how it retains its 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 dimensions or its or its um, its uh, shape. So you think about taking plastic on and off our teeth and on and off over attachments. You know, multiple times a day and how it's got to stretch to do that, get a real high contour, get over the, the right. attachments back on and off. And you want a plastic, it's like an eye tie wire, it'll snap back. So they've done studies on that and, and shown that the plastic does snap back better. Um, the, the clarity and the comfort, I mean, those are niceties, but if, it, if I wasn't going to get good results, I could care less how clear it looked or how comfortable right. it was. That's just, that was a nice thing that we kind of found with our patients. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it, but most of our patients that have had both have said that the way it feels to the tongue, the way the lip feels, particularly behind the upper incisors is is really a lot different. And then I personally like the software better, being able to click on a tooth and, and being able to make all your movements right there on that tooth not having to go back and forth and click over here for the type of movement and then back to the tooth. And then, oops, I want to rotate it, go back, find a different movement, having it all right there. I just, I feel it's a little bit quicker and, and more efficient when I'm doing my changes in the improver software. Right on. Yeah. I appreciate the feedback from both of you. You know, I will say that um, I'm a terrible s- test subject because like, I like everything. I get, it has to be really bad for me to hate something, right? To really un- not enjoy it. And I, I, I'll come clean here in public. I had an endo done on my upper right six uh, years ago uh, when I was a kid. You know, fluoride wasn't, I didn't have fluoride where I grew up. And um, I fractured it down the middle. How to get it extracted. And so I've been protracting my upper right seven into the upper right six spot. Um, and I think it's a tough movement to do with the liners. Um, particularly if you're trying to create a moment to try to get it, you know, the roots forward while you're bringing the tooth forward. Um, and so, uh, I started it with a line with Invisalign and it's, it got it really far. It took a nice job, but when it started to lose its tracking, I switched to spark because that's when I'd been introduced to spark and it did a great job of picking up where where the aligners had stopped. Uh, I learned a little bit more about what I felt the attachment I needed almost a yin yang like attachment to sort of get things moving or as, to give an homage to Maz, right? Mm-hmm. About the, or to Jonathan uh, Nikazesis about the yin yang. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when that sort of inevitably, when that stopped tracking, right? Cause it's a really tough movement. I switched back to a line just because I was there, not because of a preference of one over the other. And I got to tell you, both can function really well. I think both are well within the comfort level that most patients will tolerate. I'm not aesthetically driven to like the clarity, but I agree with you. I think the spark is a clearer aligner. I, I, I think at the end of the day, you said it best, Bill. I think it's what you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable with, the, with a line as a company, if you're comfortable with their product, if you've used it and you don't want to go new, I get it. I respect it. If you're looking for newer plastic, as you said, if you're looking for uh, other options out there, I think Spark is an amazing option. Um, and I, I, again, I, I try to stay agnostic on these things because, again, in my mouth, I've had really good experiences with both of them. But I do, I do get to read a lot of the reports or the chats that are out there where people talk about what they like and what they don't like. Um, and how do you find finishing with Spark? Has it been, not that I've heard anything negative about it, is it pretty easy to finish the cases the way you want them to? And, and how are the technicians and the clin check? Well, I hate to use the word clin check. What is the term that Spark uses? Uh, approver. Approver? Mm-hmm. Um, how, how are things in the approver software? Has it changed a considerable amount? I do remember way back when, when it first came out, it was kind of clunky and tough to use. Um, you mentioned that it's a lot better. And if you hear my dog barking, it's going to die soon. So I'm going to go take care of that. <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind if the dog is barking. I'm going to go downstairs, kill it uh, <laughs> right back. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, I'm trying to carry on this conversation, listening to this little 22 pound labradoodle barking his tail off downstairs. But, but, but again, what are some of the some of the things you've seen evolve in the last few years, and and how is the user experience in for the doctor? in terms of having to get things approved and going through the approver software? I, I've had amazing um, setups for my technicians. I really have. 
Um, it's not to say that I never get a dud back, you know, I mean, every once in a while you're going to get a dud, but that's, that's very few and far between. Um, the setups are really good. Uh, it, it really seems one of the things I, that the, the, and talking with the techs that they've, that they've told me is, you know, we have all of our preferences, just like you do in a line, but they, and if you talk to anybody that's, that does a lot of aligner cases, no matter which company, they'll say, it's great to have all those things in your clinical preferences, but you still do want to be pretty specific in your prescription yeah. because they, they will always read that prescription and sometimes they'll kind of forget what your preferences are. Right. Uh, but overall, the, the setups are really good. Um, one of the things that's been really cool for what Trevor and I have seen over the last four years is the innovation that keeps happening with this product. And it's like, it's almost to, I mean, I don't want to say to a fault, but almost where, okay, we got a new release coming out. We're, we're on release 13 wow. of the software uh, next month. And we're four years into this project, That's or, amazing. you know, project's the wrong word, but four years in this, in this product. So, um, from, from a doctor's standpoint, uh, you know, you said that you, you know, you, you kind of like, you like most things that you try, or at least it's not so much right. that you like most things, but you don't have a negative attitude towards it. And, and so when a new product comes along, you're just one of those people that you're naturally curious and you naturally want to, to, find out how to make things work. Yeah, exactly. And so when you have a company that, that comes out with a good product to begin with, and then there are 13 revisions in already in four years, you just, you know, that you're partnering with someone that really wants to not just rest on their laurels. Cause I mean, they, their sparks doing amazing as far as their growth, but I mean, being on the inside, like Trevor and I are and, and hearing the, the new things that are coming out and, you know, we'll allude to that, but now I'm talking in circles and, you know, okay. Trevor, say Trevor. Me. So, so Trevor, just you're my only hope. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. <laughs> this guy star Star Wars on the brain today. Um, so, Trevor, let's let's ask you: What are some of the innovations that you've seen in the last four years or so, or however long it's been, uh, that you've liked the most? Yeah, so I think Bill hit the nail on the head just with the innovations, um, and and you talking about this too. I mean, the fact that Spark is where it is after four years and is a major competitor in the space, I think speaks a lot, but some of the things I really like, I think they're, they're setting trends right now, even in the aligner space. I mean, first ones to have like CBCT integration with the approver, which I think is cool. You know, we'll probably talk about things we're not supposed to, but we're going to say them anyways, and just say that, you know, next coming in R13, which is going to be released later this month, um, they're going to have true roots. So when you submit your case, with the CBCT, not only do you get the CBCT data overlaying with your approver, but you also will get actual, the patient's actual roots will be there in the approver for you to move. Wow. Lots of cool little features like that. I mean, we have some really cool new integrated hooks that are coming that you're going to be able to use elastics with the aligners, with wow. integrated hooks. We're going to use that for gummy smile. I know Bill's doing the same thing. Um, so you, lots you of really need, cool. I don't, I, I think, think you're underselling that. You, you're <laughs> underselling those, those hooks right there. They're going to be so, game changer, game changer. Uh, imagine being able to run elastics and you never have to bond a button on a tooth ever again in clear liners. How, so because I don't have a picture of it in front of me um, and I'm not privy to it, can you, you know, I think of hooks in a line, right? In Invisalign where they have their elastic hooks. How is this different? So the, I would, those are slits basically. Well, they, I mean, they, the term is hook, right? But I yeah. get it. But but it's like a slit in the in the yeah, plastic. So exactly. you know how a hook looks off a molar tube? Uh huh. The, the way picture plastic coming off of plastic. Got it. Just okay. like that. It's like yeah. a Nike swoosh. Just do it. Yeah, it's just you it's, know? it's, it's <laughs> yeah. but it's it's a, a positive on on the yes. tray itself mm -hmm. as yeah. if you had bonded a button. Yep. Except it's pulling on the plastic instead of on the tooth, indirectly pulling on the tooth. Yeah, and there's a, there'll be a built-in attachment at the base of the hook. Will be like a you know like the little two millimeter rectangular attachments. Mm -hmm. So you just pump, so that's how then you're pulling on the tooth and the hook at the same time. It's it's a total game changer. It, it's yeah. you know Trevor's deal is not Trevor's deal, but one of Trevor's big things. Lots of deals. <laughs> deals. Let's make a deal. Uh, one of his one of his big things that you know that Trevor's really known for is gummy smile correction. And for all these years, we've had to you know once we 
stop doing with brackets or, you, you know, once you start doing with the liners, you have to have buttons from three to seven. And you just think of all the things that can go wrong with that, not to mention just the aesthetic, you know, change that an aesthetically looking patient wants. Imagine all those built in just to the plastic. So nothing right. can, can come loose and aesthetically it's so much better. So I totally stepped on Trevor Stowe's. No, it's okay. Um, yeah. I don't feel no, But way. biomechanically, there's a big difference because traditionally, if you bonded a button to the tooth, you're pulling on the tooth, which means you can't guarantee the tray is going to fit perfectly, particularly in intrusive movements. Yep. However, you put a hook on it. Now you're pulling on the plastic. You're guaranteeing a push instead of a pull. Same yeah. thing with AP because right if you're pulling a class two off a lower, a lower button, the tooth's going to want to rotate. Right. right now you're getting full AP correction as well because you're using everything in mass instead of just pulling off a lower six that's going to cause a mesial rotation. You have to fight with the aligner. So there's going to be a lot of great things. I like and that. again, it's just this, this is tip of the iceberg. I mean, we keep hearing, I have a list right here of all the new things coming out that it's just like each release, we have 10 new things that we're really excited about. Then we hear about the 10 more that are coming. They're just consistently working on improvements to make our wow. lives better. Just make our lives better. Make it easier for us. Nice. You want to tease me with one more? Um, yeah. So one thing that will be coming is I'm going to probably get in really big trouble for this, but web-based software I know is, is already a thing with a line that's coming, the real-time approver, all that stuff as well. But another thing that's going to be coming pretty quick, I think that's going to be amazing is just looking at how uh, different ways in which we can scan to decrease refinements. So really cool things coming. I mean, that's as much as I think I probably can say, but... I'll, I'll say, I'll say of, more. Can you say, say more? You say Come on, Bill. I'll, I'll take the arrow. Right. Okay, you go for it. hearing it here. <laughs> so uh, for those of you that, that use dental monitoring, imagine a patient takes their, their dental monitoring scans or photos at home and you create the STL off of that. I heard about that. And it's, it's already been validated. Yeah. So we've, that. we've been trialing that for God, about a year now, longer than a year. So the validation's already done. So um, just waiting on a couple little legal checkoffs and yeah, yeah that's cool. I want, so n since that's a great segue, I want to talk a little bit about your experience today where you're out spending great time with your dad and you said you had a liner patient. So it wasn't, an, it wasn't a non-patient day. It was a patient day with your team there. And obviously, at first gloss, people hear that, and there's going to be that small, very loud group of people who go, oh, my God, an orthodontist treating patients without the orthodontist there. Now, let's dive into the reality of it, of, of what's going on, and how has it been working for you? And for anybody out there who wants to throw stones ever when they don't know anybody's practice, let me be the first to assure you that Bill Dissinger's practice is high-quality ortho. This is not somebody who's cutting corners. This is not somebody who's doing mediocre care. Uh, I know Bill, he's doing great work and he Amen. really, really tries yep. to live the legacy started by his dad. Amen. So um, we can just put that one aside right now. So when you say that you had a day like that, I want to learn from this. So number one, um, you're, by the way, since Trevor's also a member of RD, give me all the secrets in RD. Don't tell anybody here. Okay? <laughs> this is, but joking aside, um, number one, I heard you say today's an aligner patient day. So you have days where you only have aligner patients, it sounds to me, which is a brilliant concept. So simple uh, and brilliant. And number two, on that day, tell me what's going on and how it's happening. Yeah. So um, the way that we do things in our office is, first of all, I do all of our approvers, um, which is the equivalent to ClinCheck and Invisalign. Um, I don't have a separate person doing it. So, and it's not that it's it's a bad thing if you want someone else doing your clean checks or approvers. I just feel like me personally, that's that's what the patient's paying for and the expertise is me doing the setups, me doing the changes and all that. Right. So I've already I've already seen that patient. Uh, if they're a new patient or refinement or whatever, I've already seen their teeth, I've already done that. And so for a new start patient, most of the time if we're doing a line or new starts, they'll do those on a day that the doctor's not there. And I've already done my, my work leading up to it. So they'll deliver the aligners, uh, place the attachments, all those things with, without me present. Once we start aligner treatment, and we're doing this now with braces too, and I'll touch on that at the very end if I yeah. can remember that. Um, but with aligner patients, with dental monitoring, every single week between the AI or if we're getting notified, we need to check something, this patient's getting seen every single week. 
I, I personally think with, with dental monitoring, we're delivering better care than we ever have. We're seeing these patients on a weekly basis. Uh, and if you don't know how dental monitoring works, I would, I would really uh, encourage you to, to, to find out. It's, it's changed my life. Um, it really has. So when we're getting towards the, the point where a patient would be ready for refinement, I will look at them in dental monitoring. We use Microsoft Teams then. Um, which kills me because I'm an Apple guy, but whatever. We use Microsoft Teams, and I will put notes in the Teams as far as what I want them to put on the prescription for a refinement submission. Or I'll say, patient looks great. Let's bring them in on a doctor day, and I'll remove attachments, and I'll do incisal polish. And then I don't have to see the patient if, if they need a refinement because I've already seen them through dental monitoring. So on these non-doctor days, They'll do refinement scans, new photos, although now we're starting to get away from even taking photos because we haven't dental monitoring already. We really don't need them anymore. So just a time savings for my team. They will then submit the case to Spark for refinement because they've already got my treatment notes. And then in two days, it comes to me and I, I do the check on, on approver. So we're, we're doing as many things as we can on non-doctor days. Before COVID, I was working 16 doctor days a month. We were running six chairs. Today, we work 11 doctor days a month. Uh, I work seven of those. My associate, Sarah, works four of those. And we're running three chairs all those days. Wow. So our practice is, is completely different than, than, than what it used to be. My life is, I'm a crier. Trevor knows this. Um, let it out, man. Just <laughs> let it out right now. Just go. I, I wish that I had had this years ago. I feel like I could have been a better father. I could have been a better son, could have definitely been a better husband. Um, and, you know, and it's not, there's a lot of people who's like, well, okay, that's great for you. But it's really, it's about just time in general. We all have the same amount of time, you know, 24-7, 365. But how do we utilize that time? So by, by me transitioning to a, a heavy aligner practice and using dental monitoring, the time savings this has has allowed me to take time from my family. But if you don't want, you know, if that's not what your thing is or that you already have that going, but you free up more time, you can start another practice. You can start another business. You can grow your practice. There's just having free time is a commodity that most people don't get more of uh, in right. our busy lives. Okay. Uh, on the braces side of it now, what we're starting to do is because we, we started with just all aligner patients. And now that we've gotten that figured out over the past year and a half, now we're adding all of our braces, braces patients on there. So now I'm doing wire checks or bite checks through dental monitoring, saving some appointments, but more importantly, it allows the freedom to schedule those braces patients on a non-doctor day if we need to just for wire changes, because I've already done that. If there's bracket bondings that need to be done or loose brackets. And obviously I'm going to be there doing the brackets, but what it does is it, it's not just a, a, an advantage for me in the practice, but think about the patient. It gives more flexibility to when they can be scheduled. It gives them a lot of flexibility as far as how many times they have to come into your business to be seen. Um, I know that we all like to think we're cool. Trevor is cool, but Glenn, you and I are not. Thanks. And Speak people, yeah, people don't. <laughs> I've read, people don't necessarily want to see I've heard of some deprecating us. humor, but I love it when you throw me under the bus with you. Like if we're in a boat and you go over, you're pulling me straight down with you. That was like that was like you know, Trevor, you're cool. Glenn and I, like, how did I get roped into this one? Trevor, no, no, remind me never to go fishing or hunting with Bill. Okay, I think you're both cool. All right. Well, well no. Well, one, yeah, what okay. I'm saying is that. Patients, if we could give patients a pill when they walked in for that new patient consult and said, hey, take this pill in about you know six months or so, your teeth are going to be straight. Come back. We'll make a retainer for you. Yeah. They'd pay an infinite amount of money for that. Yeah. They don't want to come see us all these times. They're busy. So if we can provide them what they want, which is a great smile with straight teeth, and they're not coming to see us 15 times, they're coming yep. to see us six times, that's a great service. Yeah. You know, it's funny you touched on something there um, that you're not cool or no, that we know that. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's for something I've been thinking about for like 25 years. That I was told by an older dentist many, many, many years ago, which is dentistry or dentists and orthodontists in general 
um, they always feel this need to believe that we're a so important, right? And number two, that we're we're even more important when it comes to patients having to see our face and the time we spend with them. And not, if you've you, neither one of you has ever been to my practice, but if you were, you'd see I spend time, quality time with my patients. I don't sit and BS about a football game. And I mean, we can, but I talk to them like, how are you? And not only when I'm done finding out how they're doing, then I say, and how, how, how are the teeth going? Right? Because I care about them before I care about it, about the teeth. But orthodontics and dentistry and everything is just like every other service industry. There's very few things on this planet that you will pay more for to get it done in less time. If I could fly you from Oregon to Florida in half the time, would you pay more or would you pay less, right? If I could do a root canal in half the time, if I could extract a tooth in half the time, if I could finish your ortho, I'm not gonna say half the time, but in a shorter period of time, like, and allow you not to have to come in as often, which would you pay more for? And, and I think there's this fallacy among orthodontists, and I don't know why, that we need to see patients more. Now, there could be legitimate concern from those who haven't done remote monitoring a lot saying, well, I don't trust the technology. And I think that's a fair statement if they've not yet experienced it. We've experienced remote monitoring in our practice, and it's been a game changer for us. And the list of people who've done it and the quality of individual who's done it are so huge that, you know, you could claim, well, he doesn't know what he's doing or that those two people don't know what they're doing. But there's dozens, if not hundreds of really qualified orthodontists who are using remote monitoring successfully. And so, Again, staying agnostic here, I'm just going to tell you folks out there, take the words that Bill just said and realize if you enjoy going to your office and seeing twice as many patients as you need to on a daily basis, uh, if you listen to Bob Skopek's uh, podcast interview with me where he doubled his production basically and halved his team, not on purpose, he didn't just release half his team, but now he's half the team and twice uh, the production with less stress, I mean... There's something to be said here. Uh, you know, obviously, we're, these two gentlemen are advocates for a line, uh, for Spark, but irrespective of who you're using, there's an opportunity here with wires, with aligners, to use a technology that could make your life considerably easier. And I, I think just like CBCT gets attacked or ha used to, I don't think it's much anymore. Uh, look at these technologies and see how they can change your life and make it better and more predictable and, and give your patients a better outcome. So I, I appreciate you for that, Bill. And can I just say, just real quick. Yes, um, we know I'm not it, cool. Okay, enough already. And it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that when they are in our office that we're not giving them that same high quality customer care that we always have and, and loving on them like we always have. And like you were saying, Glenn, it's about the person and you're still delivering that when they are in the office. And as an orthodox profession, we have to change. We, we can't keep doing the same thing we're doing or we're, um, we're not going to make it. I, I really, truly believe that, at least at the level that we have all these years. And with the technology that's out there, we have the ability to, to scale, our, scale our practices in a way that's going to allow us to be as successful moving forward as we always have. But if we don't change, we're not going to. I, I, I firmly believe that. Yeah, and I think Trevor, you know, having been in your office, there's something you've done that's a great lesson for anybody who's never done one of your in-office courses, which I think they should, because there's so much value in them. Um, but the culture you've created in your office is one where Everybody wants to see Dr. Nichols. Everybody wants to see Dr. Frost for many reasons beyond just the ortho. You're charismatic. You're fun. You're both, you know, built like middle linebackers, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, I'm sure the women hate seeing that. But the point is, after they've seen you, I've seen it with my own eyes. Your team culture is such that the team picks it up seamlessly and they can see your team members. And while they loved seeing you two guys, your team can deliver an experience to them that isn't dependent on you or Dr. Frost. Would you agree with that? Totally. And, you know, I think part of that with what we're looking to do is that, you know, I was at a, a conference with Dr. Sarver, Dave Sarver last weekend. And one of the things he talked about is that we're not in the, the teeth business, really. We're in the people business. 
and that a lot of us, you know, we look at the the what that we do every day, and we don't think about the why. And really, the why that we do it is is because of the people. It's not because they have a tooth that's misaligned or because they have a class two malocclusion. It's the person, it's the people we're in the people business. And the more that we remind ourselves of that and really the why that we're doing this, it makes decisions easier because we're, we're altering it. We're doing it for them. We're not doing it for us. We're not doing it for their teeth. We're doing it because we want them to live a better life. Amen. And by the way, um, I just want to add to that before we sign off here, I want to add one more thing to that, which is if you're listening to this, and you wanna have a great culture in your office, and you've seen guys like Bill and Trevor and Stu and so many other people we can talk about who have amazing culture in their practices. And I've never been to your office, Bill, but I've seen your team and I see the way they, they look at you and talk about you and it's crystal clear. And here's the deal. If you think you're gonna show up in your office in the morning and your first patient's at eight o'clock and you show up at five minutes to eight and ask somebody to get you a cup of coffee and we're gonna have a killer day and let's go get them, that's not how you build culture. Um, it takes a lot more love. It takes a lot more energy. It takes a lot more commitment. It takes talking to your team about things that have nothing to do with orthodontics. It has to do with teaching them how to live better lives, just like Trevor just said, and to allow them the opportunity to know that before they have a job, they've got somebody who cares about them. And if there's ever, I'm sorry for this bill, just grab a tissue, because if there's ever been a better ending legacy for what Terry Dissinger has brought to his practice and the life and ortho, that's it right there. That people matter more than anything. Did I hit that? You hit that. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, Bill. Yeah. But it's true. And I think that's a great place for us to end this is that there's spark, there's a line, there's, there's remote monitoring, there's all these great things you can do in your office. But above all else, technology doesn't work unless you think of the people behind it. And, um, and again, I think Bill is giving a webinar at some point in the near future. I think November 11th, uh, he's giving a webinar on Spark. And if you want to learn more about it, just contact your local uh, Ormco rep. I'm sure they will be able to give you the details of it. I hear you get paid a, a $500 if you attend, right? Is that how? Something like that. Yeah, it should be. Um, I mean, kidding. listen to me, listen to me for a webinar. You should get paid. Yeah. <laughs> no money's coming your way. Um, but seriously, gentlemen, um, as, as, as friends, as colleagues, as people I look up to, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for you being a part of this today. Um, I think you're, you're amazing representatives of the profession that I belong to. And I just can't wait to learn more and more from sort of the boundaries you're pushing. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that and for being here today, my friends.